the left and the state, where to begin? Um, uh, my pr perspective on this is probably somewhat unique in that probably unlike many of you, I was a part of the radical left for a long time. Uh, you can tell by my ponytail, right? Uh, so, some remnants of the old days. But, uh, yeah, I was a part of the radical left for about 15 years, and I'm talking about the far, far left. You know, I used to sit in on meetings of Maoists and Trotskyites and left-wing anarchists and all that kind of stuff. So I, I came from that kind of background. I was a part of it for a long time. And uh, most of what I'm going to talk about here today is really based more on my own observations of having been a part of the left for a long time, uh, you know, rather than, you know, scholarly research on the left, although I've done some of that as well. Uh, but on the right, one thing that I have noticed is that there are a lot of folks on the right that have certain misconceptions about the left and how the left actually thinks. And I think one prevailing misconception is that the left are moral relativists. I, I hear this a lot from, the, uh, from people on the right, particularly, uh, I think particularly religious conservatives or traditionalists, but others as well. Uh, it's frequently said that the left are amoral, hedonists, libertines, they believe in do your own thing, individualism, it's all just about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and uh, you know, some of us might say if only that were true, but uh, that's really, uh, you know, there, there's certainly a strand to the left that reflects that. But that is not and has never been the mainstream of the left, not in the entire history of the left, not even in the 60s was that the mainstream of the left. Uh, the left, in fact, has a very rigid moral structure to its uh, to its belief system. Now, you, you, you know, many of us may disagree with the particular moral structure itself or have hold to a different moral system, uh, but leftists are first and foremost moralists. And if I had to compare leftists with any other kind of philosophical tradition or political tradition, I'd, I'd say they probably are more closely, uh, more closely resemble theocrats, religious theocrats, than any other point of view. Um, for example, uh, somebody that's a serious advocate of theocracy, you know, whether it's Islamic or, or Christian or whatever, what they'll say is that there's a divinely imposed moral order and that it's the, the duty of the state to uphold and enforce this moral order. That's what the state is there for. Uh, and the leftists basically have a same set of beliefs about their own morals. Now, uh, many leftists, probably the majority of leftists today, are secular. They're not religious folks, although there are certainly religious folks that belong to the hard left as well. But leftists still have a type of moral outlook that's rooted in some basic concepts, most of which we're all familiar with. One is egalitarianism, and that's the idea that Things like nations, races, ethnic groups, cultures, religions, uh, genders, uh, even sexual orientations and all kinds of other things now uh, really f have no fundamental meaning. Uh, you know, my academic background is in the social sciences, and uh, the social sciences to a large degree are really just a front for leftist political activism. Uh, the, the entire discipline of sociology nowadays is could honestly be said, I think, with some exaggeration, to be leftist political activism masquerading as scholarship. But the one thing that you'll frequently hear in the social sciences, and I know when I was in college and graduate school, I heard this over and over and over again. Uh, there's no such thing as human nature. That's one thing they'll, they'll, uh, they'll tell you frequently. There's no such thing as human nature. Uh, human nature is completely malleable. And all of these things like race, gender, sexual orientation, uh, Gender identity, uh, social class, all of these things are social constructs. They have no meaning other than the meaning that we choose to give to them. Um, so human nature in that sense is completely plastic. That's one, one idea that you find on the left, and another very basic idea. Another is a type of abstract universalism. Uh, they may say that there's no such thing as, as race or gender or class or any of these other things, but they say that there is humanity. Uh, you know, like, for example, uh, in the tradition of the left, a common phrase or expression is, I have no country, I'm a citizen of the world, or the world is my country, or, you know, humanity is my church, or something like that. They have this abstract humanity that they, that they love, even if they have no use for any of the actual component parts of humanity, like ethnic groups, or cultures, or religions, or nationalities. Uh, and, of course, nowadays they're starting to ex uh, extend that to the animal world and, and the environment. You know, the, the trees have no country or the animals have no country or whatever. Uh, the workers have no gender identity. Um, you, 
Uh, this kind of abstract universalism is another part of the left's morality. Uh, and then another aspect that's uh, just as important is this kind of linear progressive view of history that most leftists at least implicitly believe in. Uh, this is an idea that, you know, rooted in Hegel and some other thinkers, but the, it's the, and it goes back to the time of the Enlightenment. But it's the idea that yeah, the idea of progress. We've, we've always got to be evolving as human beings to a higher state of existence of, of social life with more social justice and equality and freedom and humanity and all these other things. Uh, and in the eyes of the left, the worst thing you can ever be is to be backward or to be a reactionary or to be conservative or benighted or to not be progressive. Um, and of course, now what gets defined as progressive changes quite a bit over time. If you look at the left of the 19th century and what, see what they thought about race, if you go back and actually look at what Karl Marx had to say about race, you see that he had much, much different views on race than, say, Al Sharpton. Uh, but uh, So what gets counted as progressive changes quite a bit over time. A hundred years ago, you could be a progressive in good standing and be an advocate of eugenics. You know, Today you would probably be murdered if you showed up at a leftist meeting and advocated eugenics. Um, so it does change, but uh, while the, the standards of what counts as progressive do change, uh, what matters is being progressive. You've always got to be on the side of the enlightened uh, against the, the benighted or the, the, the people who are still in the dark ages. Now, in terms of how that translates into the leftist view of the state, um, we could go into a lot of abstract theories about uh, you know, how leftists view political legitimacy and what constitutes political legitimacy. We could talk about Rousseau and, and that kind of stuff. But I think a much more simple way to put it is that leftists believe that a particular state is legitimate to the degree that it, uh, it enforces and upholds and reflects this kind of leftist morality. Um, and uh, we, we saw some of that uh, in, in more recent years. Dur during the time of the war in Iraq, for example, when the, when the Bush administration was still around, but there was a fairly large anti-war movement on the left, uh, and there was a, a movement against some of the uh, anti-terrorism laws that came about during that time against the Patriot Act and that kind of thing. And you had uh, cities, for example, uh, local communities that their city council or board of supervisors, usually if they had a left-leaning or a liberal-leaning uh, board of Supervisors, they condemned the Patriot Act, and I think I think even one of the states, uh, Vermont, or one of the more the bluer states, you know, declared George Bush to be a war criminal or something like that. But um, uh, all of that dried up as soon as President Barack Obama came into office. Um, uh, it went away the next day, uh, and even though the war continued and the you know the Patriot Act continued, uh, none, none of that changed. And you know, so what, what that says, you know, beyond reasonable doubt, is that what the left really objected to were Republicans, not the police state, or not in, uh, a, a, an unnecessary war or anything of that nature. Um, and as far as the broader philosophical ideas that the left has about the state. Um, much of leftist thinking about the state has its roots in the progressive tradition, which probably can be traced back to the beginning of the public administration states, of the type that emerged in Europe, I guess, in the early to mid-19th century. But it's the, it's the idea of taking rationalist principles or empirical principles and, and sort of and trying to manage society in a scientific way uh, for the purpose of getting the results you want. It's the idea of, if, you know, if we just have the right set of policies and we have the people in power with the right set of ideas, they've been enlightened by the right set of ideological values, we can manipulate society to get the ends that we want. Uh, and, uh, you know, and which, of course, in the eyes of the left means a more egalitarian society and a less bigotry, you know, however bigotry is defined at a particular time. Uh, and, and leftists still to this day think that way. If you read social science literature, if you read what's in the, in the academic journals as well as just in the lay level uh, newspapers and that kind of thing, uh, leftists go to great lengths advocating all sorts of very broad, expansive social engineering schemes that are uh, to be imposed by the state in order to make society less racist and less sexist and more accommodating to transsexuals and more eco-friendly. And Of course, they have very contradictory ideas about this among themselves. That there's, there's no uniformity of opinion. Uh, but this idea of the social engineering state, I think, is a core value of the mainstream of the left. Now, another tradition on the left that, that has uh, influenced the, the leftist view of the state quite a bit 
is the Marxist tradition. Um, now, one thing that's interesting about Marx is that Marx actually had very little to say about the state. If you read through Marx's writings, um, and you know, Marx was a very prolific, voluminous writer uh, and a very dense writer, but he really didn't say a lot about the state. There's very little in Marx about you know, what the ideal state would be, how it be, would be structured, what kind of institutions it would have, what kind of laws it would have. Uh, and he had a good reason for, for not mentioning that, and that was he just didn't think it was important. Um, he thought that the uh, state is merely an instrument of class power. According to classical Marxist thinking, what matters is the dominant mode of production, the economic system, and each economic system has its own ruling class, and the state itself is just a reflection of the power of the dominant socioeconomic strata. Uh, and implicitly in a lot of contemporary leftist thinking is a kind of revisionist view of classical Marxism. Um, I'd argue that today the general thrust of the left isn't so much oriented towards economics. If you go to uh, a meeting of leftists today, say a leftist student group on a campus or one of these Occupy Wall Street groups even, uh, even if it's a group that supposedly is organized around economic issues, like they want a living wage or something like that, or they're against the 1%, um, what they will frequently spend more time talking about are what they call the LGBT rights or, uh, you know, animal rights. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see a group that's supposedly organized around the, the living wage to spend time talking about, well, how many, how many homosexuals do we have in our group? Well, four? Well, that's not enough. We've got to have 40%. Or, uh, you know, how, well, how many transgendered people? And what, what, what's the proper term for transgendered people? Now, it's not, okay, it's not he, it's not she, it's not shim or him or shim or, you know. Uh, and, and you see fierce arguments. I'm serious. I've seen this personally. I've witnessed this, and I've had friends that have participated in the hard left who told me about it. They see fierce arguments in leftist groups about, you know, what, what the proper term is for a transgendered person. And then you have the transgendered people who say, well, I'm not really transgendered. I'm actually intersexed, so please call me intersex. And, it's, you know, it's an affront to morality. It's a affront to morality and human dignity and human justice if you say, uh, say, for example, that a... Uh, uh, a transsexual is a tra if you call a transsexual a, uh, a transvestite by accident or something like that. Uh, this kind of thing is all over the left. Uh, it's very pervasive. Uh, I mean, it sounds like a, a circus act, but in, in, and it is, but uh, but it is quite pervasive. Um, but as far as how that translates into the leftist view of the state, um, the left today I think has a somewhat similar view of the state as the Marxist view in, in that. But it's not so much, the state is viewed not so much as an instrument of class power. It's viewed more as an instrument of social power, cultural power, or uh, hegemonic social groups. The state is a reflection in their view of, you know, straight, white, Christian, male, able-bodied, you know, uh, anatomically, whatever, uh, cisgendered. Cisgendered is the term now for someone who's not a transsexual. Um, but it's a reflection of the, the, the hegemony of all these different types of groups. Um, so, of course, the idea is to reverse that. You know, uh, the idea is to reverse that. I remember, in fact, I remember seeing an article about 20 years ago in Rolling Stone magazine, which is a mainstream leftist publication, um, and it was talking about, well, what, we'll, you know, what we, can we do to transform America, that is, make it more leftward leaning? And they were saying, you know, we really need leaders that are going to make our society more reflective of uh, the values of African Americans and Native Americans and uh, gays and lesbians and, and uh, uh, you know, a litany of ethnic groups and so forth. And I remember thinking, yeah, but what about the economic stuff? What about the foreign policy stuff? That traditionally, that's what defined much of the left, their, you know, their opposition to capitalism, their opposition to imperialism. I think that much of the left has largely chucked that. Um, you know, they may still support, say, single-payer health care or something like that. You know, nominally, they may support the welfare state. But... Um, the left today, in many ways, I think, is more of a cultural movement than a political movement. Uh, and if you have conversations with leftists, they'll tell you that. They'll say, well, you know, what's really wrong with the world is culture, you know, because we have cultures that are, that are dominated by whiteness and masculinity and heteronormativity and all, the, all these other things. That, that's a real term that gets thrown around quite a bit in these circles. I, I'm not making any of this up. 
Uh, the, uh, so what we need to do is inverse the culture. We need to turn the culture upside down so that we have a more you know, homo-friendly culture or a less white culture or a less more feminine culture. Um, and, and they're very adamant about this. I think that's one of the reasons why they're so big on policing language. I think they look at it like if they can control language and terminology, then they can control the discourse altogether. They think that by being able to control terminology, they essentially define the terms of debate. And they say, well, in anything that, you know, we, we're going to create the framework in which a, a debate can be allowed or in which thinking can be allowed. And anything out that, outside of that is heresy, right? And like I said, it gets back to what I was saying earlier about I think these people are more comparable to religious theocrats than anything else. It's, you know, in some of the older theocratic states, they had a saying that uh, heresy has no rights. And you'll hear these people say things like, bigotry has no rights. Uh, you know, and bigotry, of course, gets defined as something new every year. You know, it's, you know, to, you know, to, to call a trans gendered person, a transvestite wasn't that big of a deal, you know, 20 years ago. Now it's a crime against humanity. Uh, and they keep raising the bar. Uh, the, they keep uh, trying to define oppression in ever more implausible and, and ridiculous ways. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's oppression if you go to a school where the majority of people don't look like you. Uh, that's oppression. Uh, or... Um, uh, you know, I mean, I mean in, in this, for example, in the 1950s and the 1960s, if you asked someone, even, even a hard leftist, to define what racism is, well, they could give you an answer that sounded intelligent. Okay, racism is blacks have to sit in the back of the bus or, or denied entry to colleges and things like that. A lot of times today you won't hear leftists, when you ask leftists, for example, you know, I've asked them, I'll say, give me an example, an actually existing example of racism in our society today. And, I, and I'm sincere. I want to hear what they have to say. And one of them told me recently that uh, racism is in the air that we breathe. You know, so racism is almost like a metaphysical force, you know, like Satan or something that's like spreading evil throughout the universe. Um, now, as to how I think this will influence the development of statecraft over time, uh, one thing that I think is important to remember about the left is that because they have this malleable view of human nature, they, they, they don't really have this view that human, human beings are imperfect and therefore you know, power has to, is something that has to be checked. It has to be kept in check. You know, that's more of a, a tradition you find on the right and also among some libertarians and others, and that is that you know, you know, human beings really can't be trusted but pa with power, at least not but so much. You know, there has to be uh, divided powers and that kind of thing. Um, I think leftists tend to have the view that... Uh, Checks on power actually get in the way of achieving wider moral goals like social justice and human equality and things like that. And, you know, what really matters is that the people who hold power have been enlightened by ideology, that they, you know, they meet the, the standards uh, that they've set. You know, our committee has our standards of who passes the PC litmus test. Okay, you're in. You can be trusted with absolute power or quite a bit of it. Um, uh, the left really seems to recognize no limits on power as far as the goal of achieving, you know, all these lofty goals they supposedly have. Uh, now, as to how that would be implemented in terms of actual policy, I think we see it in some of the things that are going on today. Recently, I've come across multiple cases of people being sued for refusing to bake a cake for a same-sex marriage wedding. You know, like this is some kind of big crime against humanity. You know, how dare you affront your fellow human beings by refusing to bake them a cake? You know, of course, what follows from that is, well, if, uh, you know, say a Jewish person goes to a bakery and says, I want to, uh, uh, or, or, or rather a Nazi goes to a Jewish-owned bakery and says, well, I want a cake with a swastika on it, and the, the owner says, well, no, is that, is that discriminating against this person for their political beliefs? That's, you know, I mean, how, how are you going to apply this across the board? Or is it, or is it the only the officially oppressed? You know, it's like that's a term I, I use to define a lot of leftist thinking on this. Is that you have this uh, the officially oppressed? You know, it's like you, you, you it's like the, or the pantheon of the oppressed. That's a term I actually got from Justin Romando of antiwar.com. The pantheon of the oppressed. You have all this, you know, this whole spectrum of gods in the sky who are now oppressed. You know, by uh, you know, so we have to elevate them to godlike status. Um, um, but, yeah, it's things like the, the lawsuits over the, 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 the uh, gay wedding cakes. Um, also, one thing that I find uh, somewhat alarming is that uh, increasingly there is a, a view among leftists uh, to believe that ch essentially family 
autonomy really means nothing. That, uh, for example, a lot of leftists increasingly seem to have the view that providing children with religious instruction is child abuse. You know, if you're some kind of fundamentalist or evangelical Christian and you're raising your kids, teaching them all this backward superstition, well, you're abusing that child. Um, and that child, you know, needs to have the CPS or whomever come in and rescue them. Um, and, I mean, and you, I have seen cases where children have been removed from the home of the parents for things that were, you know, somewhat more extreme, but not, you know, not immediately threatening. Like, uh, there was one case where, uh, uh, I think it was a skinhead couple that they named their child Adolf Hitler or something like that, and the kid was taken away from them. But, uh, uh, but I think the left over time has as its goal the expanding of these kinds of policies. Um, also, um, the, the left seems to have a real problem with any, the existence of any competing centers of power where, uh, where non-leftist values might be practiced. Um, for example, I remember having a conversation with a leftist um, a couple of years ago, uh, and, I, and he was talking about uh, Bob Jones University, which is a, a evangelical well, fundamentalist Protestant uh, private college in South Carolina. It's a very, very conservative, uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, very rigid in their thinking in many ways. And he was talking about what an awful thing it was that this place existed. And I said, well, you know, do, do they draft people to go to this place? I mean, do they go out and kidnap people off the street and hold them there? I mean, you know, as I understand it, it's a college. People actually have to pay to go there, so they must be doing something for them. It's not my thing, you know. You know, same with the Church, church of Scientology. I, I always thought that group was a little odd, but, you know, it's, that, who am I to judge, you know? But, uh, but uh, they, the left seems to, leftists just seem to have this psychology that cannot tolerate the idea that anything unprogressive is actually taking place. And it doesn't matter whether the people actually involved even want to be there or not. Uh, just, just the mere act of being unprogressive itself is a, it's, a, it's sort of a, like what Dr. Gabb was saying last night. It's very similar to the Puritan idea that, well, somebody somewhere might be having a good time, so we got to prevent that. Uh, you know, somebody somewhere might be reactionary or benighted. Um, another aspect of the left that I see being coming uh, increasingly dominant on, on the left is therapeutic culture. Uh, if you set in with on a meeting of leftist political activists, you will often think you're in an AA meeting or uh, uh, some kind of group therapy session. Um, it's not uncommon at all to hear people try to bring all sorts of personal drama and dysfunction into into political activism, saying, uh, you know, we're here for the environment. Yeah, but you know, I was beaten as a kid. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, my, my father, you know, raped me when I was 12 or something. I mean, which are the terrible things like that happen. I mean, people have actually experienced that. I'm not ridiculing them. But uh, the left seems to have uh, no conception at all of, of what the political even is. In fact, there's a slogan, the personal is political, which basically just means, you know, your, your personal drama and dysfunction or, or political issues that everybody else has to care about. And I was having an email correspondence a couple of years ago with a fairly well-known leftist writer um, who was telling me about how, you know, he was going on and on about how he had a repressive religious upbringing and he has psychological problems because of it. And I'm like, Sorry to hear that. You know, maybe you should find a counselor. That that's a political issue. How? You know, it's a, uh, and but that's really where the left is today. Um, if I uh, I've asked leftists um, things like, well, if somebody has opinions that you don't agree agree with, that you think are racist or sexist or homophobic or ableist or ageist or transphobic or you know whatever. How are they harming you by thinking differently? Well, they're harming society as a whole. You know, they're they're harming humanity because uh, those kinds of ideas you know, shape society and yada yada yada. And and and, uh, and and it's harmful. One one person once told me that uh, one leftist once told me that it's harmful to people of color to know that racism exists. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it maybe I think it's harmful that bad to know bad breath exists. It's uh, you know it's. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, the left increasingly is unable to make these kinds of distinctions between the political realm, between the cultural realm, between the personal realm. Um, and like I said, if you sit in on a, on a left-wing meeting, they spend inordinate amounts of time trying to recognize all the official victim groups. Okay, yeah, we're here for the living wage, but we've got to make sure the women of color speak first. Then the men of color can speak. 
Uh, and as far as the transsexual, white, you know, gender, male gender born, cisgendered, you know, pre-op, whatever, uh, well, we're not sure where to put them in this. Maybe they should go first, you know. Uh, and these are considered serious issues by leftists. You know, this is not a this is not a, a joking matter to them. If you you know ridicule them, they'll it's, it's like sacrilege to them. Uh, it's blasphemy. You know, how dare you you ridicule us when we're trying to uh, rescue marginalized uh, you know transsexuals of color or whatever. Uh, so uh, one thing I, I might suggest you might have to do this undercover. But if you know, go and visit some actual leftist activist meetings and, and check out what goes on there. It's really Funny. If you like circuses or professional wrestling and stuff like that, you'll probably like this. Uh, but that's really all about have to say about it, except to say that you know we can just to, uh, we can imagine what will happen in the future the more this kind of stuff becomes embedded in the state, and that's the main reason why I am as anti PC as I am. If, if people were off doing this on their own on their own time, you know, I think well, fine. You know, everybody's got to have a hobby. There's the Star Trek freaks and there's these people, right? But uh, but unfortunately, these are people who aspire to state power uh, and, and are su succeeding at it and, uh, and who think that these kinds of ideas are ideas that they should use to reshape and remold society in a very extensive way. Uh, and they're becoming increasingly embedded in institutions, uh, in, in the state, obviously, uh, also in the corporate sector. Uh, I, I remember some years ago, probably about 12 years ago, 10 years ago, I was working for a corporation, a large, well-known corporation, and as part of the orientation, you have to go through sensitivity training, and they show you these ridiculous training videos of, uh, you know, how to how to treat clients of, you know, depending on their ethnic background and things like that. Well, you never say this to a Jewish person, or you never say this to a Chinese person. Uh, this was in the corporate world. As far as I can tell, there was no state requirement that they do this. Maybe they're doing it to avoid lawsuits or something like that, but... Uh, uh, even even in the military, which you know most people would think is a is a fairly conservative institution, I, I have friends who have recently been out of the Marine Corps or something like that, and I say you you wouldn't believe the kinds of stuff they put us through with you know, sexual harassment and how to treat your gay fellow soldiers and uh, you know cultural sensitivity when you're overseas. It's uh, really quite unbelievable. So uh, in fact, I think there was a, a case there was a case some years ago of. Uh, uh, a Muslim, I think it was a Muslim psychiatrist who was in the army and he shot up a bunch of soldiers on a, one of these random public shooting things and he did it for Allah, whatever. And, uh, and someone suggested, well, maybe we just shouldn't have Muslims in the military given the state of the world. And, uh, and one of the generals, one of the top brass in the military, in the on the joint, joint chiefs of staff, I believe, said, no, that would, that would, no, not having, uh, undermining our diversity is, would be an even greater tragedy than terrorism. You know? So not having Muslims in the army is, is worse than mass murder. Uh, and that, that's the kind of thinking that reflects this kind of leftist morality. Egalitarianism comes first. This kind of abstract hum, human universalism comes first. Uh, and I think we'll see more of this over time. And I also think the more deeply entrenched in, in institutions the left becomes, the, the more fanatical they will become and the more uh, uninhibited they will be about showing their fangs. As far as the gay rights thing, that's a perfect example. It used to be they said, we just want to repeal sodomy laws. We don't want gay bars to be harassed by the cops. Then was, we want to get married. Oh, okay, we'll let you do that too. But now you're obligated to bake us a wedding cake. And, oh, and by the way, we want to adopt children too. Uh, you know, we have prior convictions for pedophilia, no problem. You know, that's discrimination if you say that we can't adopt children. Uh, and that's how, that's how things are going. Thank you.